In 2018, Yves Saint Laurent came out with the very popular modern day Y EDP, hoping to bring some more fame to the Y line. Y EDP was supposed to take the great formulation of the EDT version, but beef it up quite a bit. Since then, Y EDP has been a very popular fragrance within the men's fragrance community, with most people being able to recognize the fragrance. But does the fragrance live up to the hype? Is the fragrance as good as what it's supposed to be? What's going on, guys? Bo Million coming back with another fragrance review. If you have not already done so, and you like this fragrance content, go ahead and click the subscription button click the notification bell, press the like button for the YouTube algorithm, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So I remember like it was just yesterday. I had spent some time with a very close friend of mine who's very much so into fragrances and I was only familiar with the Bod Fresh Blue Musk and Axe Body Spray. And him and I were talking about fragrances and he was showing me his collection. He began to pull each fragrance one by one off of the countertop and show me the collection that he had. For not knowing much about fragrances but being very intrigued with fragrances, I thought that his collection was monster. Needless to say, he ended up pulling this fragrance off the counter. YSL Y EDP. I actually lied to you, he actually had the Le Parfum version. But I smelt the fragrance that he had and I loved the smell. I loved every aspect of it. It was clean, but had some substance to it. And some time goes on and I tell him that I wanna start getting into fragrances. So he sends me a link from the internet. I said, is this the fragrance that you had? He says, no, it's a little bit different, but you're still gonna like it. So I went ahead and did it. The link that he sent me took me to AuraFragrance.com where I found two ounces of YSL Y EDP for just $65. Might have been 63. Nonetheless, I thought it was a steal considering the fact that I saw the mall was selling it for way more than that. He said, you need to get the fragrance because you're gonna like this bad boy right here. So I picked it up. Now my fragrance collection up until this time consisted of just basic body sprays. I had a couple samples that people had sent me and that I got from the mall. And then randomly my wife had bought me Tobacco Vini by Tom Ford, which didn't make any sense considering the fact that it was summertime. But it was a birthday gift and I love it every bit. Honey, keep on buying me fragrances. So I purchased the fragrance online and it came in the mail a week later. I took the fragrance out of the box and I began to open it up. As you see, I, I don't have the box with me, but we can go ahead and talk about my experience. The box was nice and the presentation of course is very appealing considering the fact that Yves Saint Laurent is a very high end designer company. So of course, visual are very important to them. But I pulled the fragrance out of the box and began to look around. The cap was very nice and it has a nice rotation on it that it's still connected to the bottle, but it doesn't feel like it's coming off, which is kind of cool. The logo is ingrained into the cap. I don't know if that'll autofocus or not. Nonetheless, it's there if you don't see it. And of course, there's the ever so popular Y on the side. Now at the time, I didn't really pay much attention to stuff like this but I know it's very important to you all, so I'll go ahead and mention it. The bottom of the bottle has the size, the two fluid ounces, the concentration being an EDP, as well as the batch number. I'll read it out to you. 3-8-W-N-O-O-H. Do with that as you will. The cap is a nice clip and is nice and snug, and although I don't plan on holding the bottle by the cap, I don't have anything to worry about. Now, of course, we all wanna see the atomizer. The atomizer is good, not the best, but definitely very good. Oh, that smell. <laughs> that being said, let's get into the smell since I'm already in it right now. This is known as a very blue fragrance. Blue fragrances are very popular for the summertime and are known for their versatility as well as their aquatic notes. This fragrance definitely falls in line with the blue notes and being a blue fragrance, but it's very different because there's a lot of other earthy notes and woody notes that support the fragrance as a whole. Let's get into the different notes. Here are the notes of the fragrance according to Fragrantica. Top notes are apple, ginger, and bergamot. Middle notes are sage, juniper berries, and geranium. And base notes are amberwood, tonka bean, cedar, and vetiver, as well as olibanum, 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 holy moly. So as far as the scent profile of this fragrance, it actually kind of falls in line with what Fragrantica was really talking about. After about 30 seconds and the alcohol smell dies down, it's a very apple heavy fragrance. There is this sweetness, this apple sweetness and kind of citrusy 
on the top of the fragrance. Of course, that could be the bergamot as well, but the apple is really pronounced in the opening. As the fragrance really begins to dry down, the sage and juniper berry really kind of come out, more so the sage. There is a kind of earthiness and substance that the sage brings to this fragrance that kind of helps it to stand out from other blue fragrances. And then of course, as the fragrance dries down, it becomes a little bit more woody with the amber wood. And a really cool thing is this, is that when you spray it on your clothes, the tonka bean is kind of present with that powdery aspect. I personally don't notice the tonka bean when it's on my skin, but as it dries down on clothes, I really notice the tonka bean as time goes on. It's kind of a neat feature. As far as longevity, sillage, and power goes, this fragrance is known for being a projection beast. I don't know if I would necessarily call it a projection beast though. You're going to get really good solid projection for about an hour and a half, maybe up into two hours. Three to four hours after that, it's going to be a good one foot off of you. People walking by you will smell and even the sillage is still there. After that six to seven hour mark, it's really going to die down to a pure skin scent and it's going to kind of wither away from there. I know that a lot of people say that this fragrance is a 10, 12 hour beast and I do kind of question what they mean by that. If I'm spraying this fragrance on my skin, I don't notice the 10 to 12 hour projection beast. Although if I'm spraying it on my clothes, yes, it lingers on my clothes even to the next day, especially that tonka bean and some of the aquaticness of the fragrance, if I could say that appropriately. Nonetheless, if you buy this fragrance online at a discounter like I did on Aura Fragrance for in the mid 60s, or even if you buy it on say fragrance.net for in the mid 80s, it's still a really good pick and the longevity makes sense for a blue fragrance actually i kind of think it's better than most blue fragrances after all this fragrance is definitely a compliment getter and people that smell it are really going to like it the only thing you really have to worry about is whether people will recognize the fragrance or not since it is a very popular fragrance but considering the fact that people still buy it to this day non-stop i'm Pretty sure it's safe to say, even though you may not smell out from the rest of the crowd, you're still gonna smell really good. Now, is this a fragrance I recommend you buying and keeping in your collection? This was the first designer fragrance that I had personally purchased, and I'm so thankful that I bought it because a year later, I'm still wearing it, and I've gone through over half the bottle, if you can see how much is left. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at about half the bottle left. Half the bottle gone a year later, and I'm still wearing it today, and I even got a compliment today when wearing it. Numbers are so subjective, so I won't put a number to what I think of the fragrance one out of 10. What I will say is that for most of you, this fragrance is at least gonna be an eight. Some of you maybe even a nine or a 10. Some of course, maybe less. That being said, this fragrance is a good buy and it's definitely worth it. That being said, if you've never smelled YSLY EDP and you're curious at getting a hold of it, I wanna give one lucky subscriber a chance to win a decant of YSLY EDP. All you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and leave a comment in the comment section below of your thoughts about this fragrance. That being said, Thank you so much for entering into the giveaway. And there you guys have it, Bo Million signing out one more time. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you have not already done so, go ahead and click the subscription button, click the notification bell, press the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Ah. <sighs>